Okay, so we're about to show you a, a video on a cloacopexy on this bird. Good old baby bird. And she's an umbrella cockatoo. And she prolapsed her cloaca, and so we went in and repaired it. And the video will show it quite well. The, um, this is a common problem in cockatoos. Um, and it requires surgical. There's no other good way of repair. It's, it really requires surgery. Okay, let's see the video. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, this cloacopexy of, of uh, baby bird, and who is a cockatiel, and cockatoo, excuse me, cockatoo. And there's a picture of the prolapsed cloaca, and there's baby bird. You can see her sitting on, on the cage. She's in pain and not able to defecate properly. So here we have her position on the surgical table, and we're draping her in. Sometimes the, uh, the drapes that you use that are... Uh, that are a little better for this would be something that's um, a little uh, adheses to the to the skin. So I had a, an assistant uh, put his finger in to her cloaca so we could extend it, and I'd know where to cut. I'm cutting right at the, um, the cranial portion of the of the cloaca. Make a transverse incision with the laser works very nicely because very little blood. Then we go in and we're going to suture the cloaca to the, uh, the last ribs on both sides. So that's what we're doing on this side. And putting in a very fine uh, piece of suture, some 4-0 uh, PDS, and which is uh, monofilament. Make the tie there, and go to the other side, cut that off, go to the other side, and we're putting, anchoring to the other rib, there we are, and right there, make it a nice tie, and then what we're going to do is, um, is, uh, Scarify. We want to remove a little bit of the of the blood of the excuse me of the fat from the edge of the cloaca so that it adheres. So here I am taking the edge of a pair of scissors and I'm scarifying the, the tissue there so it'll adhere because we want it to adhere to the um, the abdomen so that it doesn't pop back out, doesn't prolapse. Again. And there I am suturing it to the musculature, the, the abdominal musculature. I'm going to incorporate the, um, the uh, part of the cloaca right into that incision. So that's what we're doing there. And we're going to close the musculature layer as well. So really, it's only a two layer closure. Uh, so we're doing that. There's no very little uh, subcutaneous tissue to get a hold of for any kind of closure in that regard. But this worked quite well. Uh, and then eventually, okay, he's taken out the, his finger, and we're going to just go ahead and close the skin with a couple of sim simple interrupted. I'm still using the, um, the PDO, PDS uh, suture material. And she tolerated that really well. I, I, I wasn't sure how she would take it, but she tolerated it really well. This is a common problem in cockatoos, by the way. So it's not a very big incision, and the closure only took a couple of sutures to close it. There's a post-operative view of her, and there's the, uh, the vent. The vent is a little bit, it, it's like... It's, it's a little bit open, a little more open than I wanted it to be. I wasn't sure if I'd have to uh, do a, uh, um, some type of procedure to close that down. But as it turns out, <laughs> it's burning. Yeah, so that we had an e-collar in place so she couldn't mess with it. Took the e-collar off. She's still not messing with it. As a matter of fact, she's sitting here right beside me and doing great. So thank you.